Hello. I have a story to tell. I got an email. Uh, you know, my man Nelson, he, he, he from, he's in Atlanta, but he always sending me stuff, cultural stuff. But he sent me a thing, uh, Sun Ra changed my life. 13 artists reflect on the legacy and influence of Sun Ra. Right? That got me to remember, remembering. <laughs> Let me show you. What am I going to show you? Let me try to turn this thing around without too much damage. Take that off. Uh, maybe I should bring it to you. Oh, sorry for that. Maybe I should bring it to you. I don't know if you can see this. This is a re record album. A recording album. This is the cover of it. Right? I hope you can see it well. Okay, that's a picture of um, Sun Ra. That's the gentleman with the cap, right? And the other gentleman with the hair and the, and the goatee, mustache, is Henry Duma. And it's an album. The name of the album is The Ark and the Ankh, Sun Ra, Henry Duma, in conversation, uh, in conversation, 1966, Slug Saloon, New York City. I know Slug Saloon. I've been to Slug Saloon. Back, back when, in fact, I was about maybe the next year because, uh, yeah, about when I was 17, about 67. In fact, I was there when, uh, when Henry Morgan was playing. Henry Morgan was playing, not the night that he got, you know, killed, but he was playing. Harry, Harold Mayburn he was there. Harold Mayburn is the father of Michael Mayburn, who was one of the people I trained in. Radio. Ah, it's, it's circle. Circles are always complete. But, um, let me put this down because I want to show you something, if I possibly can. I'm going to tell you a story. Let me start easy, easy peasy, right? Oh, maybe let me just say it says um, the uh, the uh, the ark and the ankh because Henry Duma, his or his nickname, if you want to put it that way, is here we go, Henry Hank H A N K, right? And if you move things around. Well, Ankh, how do you spell Ankh? A and what, K H? Is that how they spell it? You know how to spell Ankh. So he used he used Ankh, I don't know how I'm spelling it, he used Ankh as his name, as a, you know, he moved it around. How do I know that? I got that from Loretta, his widow, Loretta Duma. How do I know Loretta Duma? Well, when I had my radio program, remember I told you about that before, radio program. Right there. Uh, listen, radio is radio, you know. But uh, now there is variations of blackness. Wednesday, seven to uh, seven o five to nine thirty p.m. Wednesday, uh, over WRSU FM eighty eight point seven. That's the radio station of uh, Rutgers University proper. I see variations in blackness. That was my college radio program. Now the way I had it because um, well, what happened? Well, let me tell you what happened. Back then, to be on the radio. What you had to do, you had to get the call a third class, a radio telephone third class operator permit, right? And you had to take a test. This was a math test. You had to take it up in New York City. And we was, this was New Brunswick, we were in New Brunswick. So I had to, anyway, I took the test, right? But a lot of people failed it. I didn't know at the time. Anyway, I was one of the few people that passed that test. So I took my little radio license because they, they said that if I got my little radio permit, then I can have a, uh, um, I can have a, um, a radio program on the, Broadcast station at or at uh, at Rutgers proper, and this is because I was on Livingston. I was Livingston student, but Livingston had a carrier come and say yeah. so. But because when I came in, I was the only black person. Well, I wasn't the only black person, but they wasn't expecting a black person to show up. So what I did, what I did was very simple. What I did is I came with more than one person. That's right. I had a group. Me, I have my 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 my, my confidant, son Annie Bryant, uh, my 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 roommate, and his other bro brother Chuck, big black guy. And so four black people walked into this stage. They were expecting one for this radio program, but but I, you know, had a crew, you know. But because we as college students, I was thinking, always thinking. I said, look, if we are college students, then we can't. Well, I made three positions, right? There was the host, the producer, and the engineer. There's only three, right? But there's four of us, so we would rotate these tasks. I was teaching the radio at the same time. Okay, so. What happens is, um, it's very simple, very simple, very simple. One would have the week off, but that would give you enough time to produce, whatever, to, to do whatever they did. 
Okay, so right. what happened, I think it was Chuck, I'm not really sure, but he ran into Loretta Duma, who, who still lived in the area, because Henry, you know, he, he lived it, you know, he went to Rutgers, but he lived in that area in New Brunswick, and so she was still in the area, and she told him about Henry's work. Hold on a second, I just got to write back and tell my sister that I'm recording. I'm not going to have Okay, so, hey, we're always raw here. So we go. So, he brought up Loretta. And she was telling about about her, her, you know, her. She was a widow, you know. She was talking about her, her late husband Henry Dumont, right? And this is, um, remember, this is nine. This is seventy. This is seventy. He passed in, in um, nineteen sixty eight, like May twenty third, something like that. Nineteen sixty eight. He was shot at in, in, uh, at a hundred and uh, there's it, it, on the three line. The three line goes one hundred forty seventh Street, really. Then one hundred forty fifth Street. Then one hundred thirty fifth Street. Then on, then then at 136th Street, I guess it's, it's joined by the two train. The two train goes on that line. This is in Harlem, okay? So he was at some sort of rehearsal. He was at a rehearsal with, with Sun Ra, right? And so this was on 145th Street. He went to that train station. There was a young man being accosted by a transit police. He was a rookie policeman. Now I have to say this. Henry was pretty intimidating, okay? You know, you know. Anyway, so they got into some sort of altercation, and he, Henry was shot, shot dead, right? And uh, now this is interesting. But uh, what Sun Ra says you know, at that time that the train that w w the train that came did not stop at the station. They went past that station. Okay, that could be a number of reasons, but he went past that station when Henry was Henry was shot. Okay, so that's that 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 background. But here's the thing: that album. How did that? Well, let me let me keep on going with the story. So because. You know, Loretta came to the program. You know, I was very interested because I'm a literary kind of person. You know, actually, my undergraduate degree is a double major, sort of kind of like uh, communications, you know, with a concentration of video at the time and television production. My radio experience comes from experience. First, I was I was posing residence for a radio program in, in, at, at Princeton University. And then when I got to uh, Rutgers, to Livingston College, to Rutgers, I had my own program, right? Okay, so here we go. So, uh, so I was very interested in it. So we, we got to talking and whatever have you. And she was telling me about her husband. So oh, I'm very interested. And so I, I, I went and st started, you know, just reading his books. And I started, I don't know, the, the, I bought these books. Like this, this was the first book that, um, that I got, right? Right? His uh, Play Beneath Play Ivory. Now the original Play Beneath Play Ivory, I guess his first book was, uh, it was self-published someplace else, but this is a Random House edition, first one out. Then Ark of Bones and other short stories, right? I love, oh man, oh, oh yeah, I did some adaptation from this book too. This has some amazing stories. Like, I, uh, my favorite story in this whole book is uh, Fawn. Fawn, amazing story. I would say this, you know, Henry, when he's when he's writing, what's, what, what happens is, um, it's like science fiction. I mean, all these stories can be adapted. Do what they have the new Twilight Zone? Hey, somebody need, hey, Spike, somebody needs, what, what's that guy, the, the, the Jordan guy, Jordan Peele, whatever have you. You need to look at, contact, look. This over here is a young picture winner. This is 1988. This is, uh, this is right there. That's Eugene Redmond. That's Loretta Dumas. And of course, that's me. Oh, young, look at me. Anyway, well, we're all looking young here. Like that. Well, the, uh, Eugene's like the executive of the state, executor of the state, and da da da. So, Jordan, you need to get in touch with them to, to get some Henry on the, on, on the screen. Okay, so let me move this out the way. And then he had other books. Oh, I think I got Knees of Natural Man. Like, no, no. These are National Selective Poetry. I think this is a republish of, of some of. Or, no, no, no. These are. Yeah, he has Play Ivory, Play Ivory in here, a bunch of other poems in here. I think this is sort of the expanded. Not, no, maybe it's just a reprint, really, of. Uh, Play Ebony, Play Ivory. Okay, so that, yeah. Um, oh, this, well, I'll get that last. Uh, his next book, amazing book, well, I guess, no, I think this Rope of Wind, Rope of Wind, I think, is, oh yes, it's, it's, uh, I think it's, because the lake, oh, the lake, the lake is my favorite Henry Dumas story. It's, fa it's a beautiful story. It's like mystical, it's a wonderful. Um, Anyway, I think that may be the same thing as the Ark of Bones. Maybe they republish it, but this is the hardcover. Hardcover. 
I can bring these books out now because all my stuff is at my sister's house where I am right now. Um, and then his, his unfinished novel, which uh, 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 says uh, Eugene Redmond arranged this thing, is Genoa in the Green Stone. Genoa and the Green Stone. I love the way this thing starts out. There's this line, I think, if I can have it here. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure if it's right there. Do you want to go to the last introduction? The introduction, that long introduction. Uh, Children of the Flood is first. I think this says here. To say, you know, but anyway, there's a, there's a, there's a, I'm not really sure it is. I should have looked it up. But he says that uh, the, the games that children play, per, the games that children play per, um, prepare us for adulthood. Genome and Greenstone, great. Well, I like, I, I like this one, right? Right. And then, uh, this was the last thing I got before I left uh, the States for good. Well, for good. In 2003, when did this come out? Wait a second, let me, let me check the uh, whatever. It was, it's, this stuff is really interesting in my little life with 1988. No, this is, this is, this thing was, no, it was later. Anyway, right before I left, by happenstance, they were doing something at, 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 at Rutgers. Maybe it was 1988. Uh, Rutgers and, um, and, well, I stage managed at the event. Let's put it that way. But, um, like that. Because that's what I do, I stage manage. Hmm. That's one of the things I do. Then, Somewhere in all this stuff, because I adapted uh, some of his poetry uh, to, um, uh, to, to, a, to a play uh, called The Mystic Wind. And uh, this is, it came out in this uh, black American literature form, uh, which I am in here someplace. Da, 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 da. We have people like uh, um, Margaret Walker Alexander, Eugene Berman, uh, Russell Atkins, Amir Baraka, uh, George Barlow, uh, Adrian Baytop, uh, Lincoln P. Boca, uh, Gwendolyn Brooks, Jerome Brooks, uh, Michael Castro, uh, uh, Robert Christman, uh, Eugenia Carter, Jane Cortez. I love Jane Cortez. Um, uh, David Corn, I know uh, Edward Cosby, I think he's a professor, was a professor. Nia Samani, Nia Samani, James, da, 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 Vernon Vernon, uh, Sherman Fowler, great poet. Uh, uh, poetry of Henry, right there. Um, Stephen Henderson, uh, somebody Jones, uh, or George Austin Jones, Picky Lane, da, 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 da. Curtis Lyle, uh, um, K. Curtis Lyle, uh, Robin, da, da, da. Uh, oh, Haki, uh, um, Marabuti, you know him, uh, like a character on Miller, Tony Morrison, uh, Larry P. Neal. Uh, is that Larry? I guess it is. Yeah, it must be Larry, real Larry. Um, uh, Eugene Memick, da 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 da, da 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 da, Eugene Memick. Uh, let's see, Ishmael Reed. I'm in good stead here. Uh, Darlene Roy, there he is, Anthony Sloan, Mr. Gwynn. Uh, Clyde Taylor, uh, Quincy Troop. Oh, man, I love Quincy Troop. Can I tell you something about Quincy Troop? Uh, but but a lot a lot of folks. Was, uh, John John A. Williams did a piece in here. Man, I was in good company. Let me tell you something about Quincy. I can't really say to her. Quincy. So, somebody, Quincy wrote uh, you know, Miles Davis biography. But uh, somebody asked him, Quincy, how do you do it? Because he's writing poetry. He said, Look, what I do is I get up every morning. I sit in front of the typewriter, and if there's a poem out there, I grab that. You finished, but he's the way he talks. Okay. So this did. So that's it. Okay. Now, so when I saw that thing. Okay, so, so so it was, you know, I, I knew Loretta. This is, oh, hey, this is, a, this is a picture of Craig Harris. I'll probably see him uh, soon. But I like this picture because here is a shadow of him. It's taken by uh, this sister. There's a sister. Uh, she's a photographer. Uh, I don't know if I see her here. Anyway, she told, oh, here. This is here. This sister to here took that picture. But you see that sweatshirt? I think Rodney Black made this sweatshirt for me. Henry's picture right there, you know, and here's, oh, here's Eugene and, uh, and Mary Baraka right there, and this, oh, here's, uh, uh, this Eugene, I don't know who this is, that's me with the sweatshirts, with event. but this is the great Pepsi Charles, right here, I love Pepsi, I love Pepsi, I truly love Pepsi, peace and blessings of your eternal soul, you know, we say Livingston College, but she's my teacher at Livingston College, it's funny, th that time, we were all together, and Pepsi would just kiss me on the lips, she had the most, the most, Soft lips I ever experienced, okay? Not slobbing lips, come on now, y'all get, get your heads out the gutter. Um, let me see, uh, this is that same event, uh, Eugene, da 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 da. Yeah, this is the same event, 
Um, I don't know what this is. Okay, leave that alone. Um, like that, like that. Leave that over there. Oh, um, oh, here's um, here's a picture of uh, Eugene, Loretta, and uh, I think this is David, uh, the oldest son. Henry had two sons, Michael and David, and they both tragically committed suicide. Okay, now. Um, we had, I did a, a program in the early 80s. We did a, uh, you know, when he's doing that, uh, r right before, what they call, that perform, you know, um, the performance art thing. We did a program. Uh, my, 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 my woman at the time, my girlfriend at the time, uh, Jan Ford, she's a, uh, she's a dancer, a choreographer. And we was going to school, with, and I'm a poet, right? So we got together, and I got this uh, guest artist. Uh, his brother, Greg, Greg Javon Mills, okay? And so he was an artist. He was an artist because I was, I, was, I, was, uh, I was modeling at the School of Visual Arts at the time. He was a, a school there. So we put together a program for the oh, Black Writers Union had a, had, a, had a program. So we were, we did this program. That's what it looks like right there. We call our little company, me and Jan, put together. Janthony. Okay, okay, but that's the way it was, right? But look. I just realized I had picked up a. I did a, a posting the other day, and I put. I, I did, and I did roots on that. No, but I just saw this after that, roots, and we had this whole thing, uh, including the first stanza, uh, roots on, Janelle and the Talisman, the monologue, uh, untitled, a poem untitled from her, from him, right? And then we have here, da, 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 oh, untitled is a poem that I wrote. Anyway. Uh, so anyway, so Jan did the movements and, and the vote, and I basically I was a poet. I was at the podium, and as I was reciting, she would do she was uh, do some then some dancing choreography, and Greg was in the back doing a a, a picture, you know, like that. So, so it was a performance art early on. This is uh, oh April 11th, 1981. Okay, that predates everything, right? I mean, yeah, predates all the people. But Sarah Bernhardt, you know, uh, 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 Blue Man Group, all that stuff. Those things. Hey, we did it first. Okay. Uh, what's I gonna say to you now? Okay. <sighs> Boy, am I thirsty. <sighs> now I'm gonna get to the story. I think I'm gonna get to the story. So you just oh, let me show you something. <laughs> American ingenuity. Okay, I have to show you this. I didn't notice, but I got these sandals right. They got a bottle opener there. I want to see if it works. This is the first time I'm using it. See if it works. It's a bottle opener. Lord, Lordy, be American ingenuity. So you're at the beach and you can open your bottle of beer. Oh, by the way, I'm not really drinking. I'm not really altering my state on this. Well, I'm not drinking, but anyway, I saw Guinness in the store. And I, I can't Guinness it. I can't get Guinness in uh, South Africa anymore. I get this international Guinness. It's really sweet stuff, you know? And uh, I used to, I, I, I turned on the Guinness when I was in Belize, right? Belize, Guinness has all these breweries around the world. They commission and brew, the Guinness in Belize is pretty good. They say the best Guinness is from Nigeria. Okay. But this is Guinness. This is real beer. If you're going to drink beer, you see that? See that color? You see that color? I shouldn't be doing it like that. I like half and half Guinness, but I'm going to do that. That's okay. Ah, a real beer. But let me get on the story. So anyway, so I'm, I'm busy. I'm, uh, this was, uh, I forget what it was, but I'm down in Tower Records. I guess when it was Tower Records in the 80s someplace. I don't always go to record bins at the time. You know, I was just a music head and I was on the radio, so I was always looking for stuff. And so I come across that album, you know, you know, the, the, the arc beats the arc. So, oh, I gotta get this Henry Dumont, right? Hey, I'm looking at his credits, I'm always great. So I get home, I put it on, I'm, 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 I'm listening to it. I said, wait a second, I know this stuff. I know this conversation. Wait a second, I know this conversation. Now I'm thinking. I mean, because I'm, I'm I'm, I'm, this is the 80s. I'm, I'm just thinking. I'm thinking. I know this. I've heard this. Whoa. This is the late 80s. Man. I, I heard this. I heard this. Then I realized it's my work. <laughs> when I say it's my work, Loretta had these tapes. And, and she, she had these tapes. She said, Well, I think I have these tapes. Can you do something with them? They were on cassette or something like that. And so what I did was I went and I worked on it, worked out, enhanced them, everything I could to get the best quality out of it, right? And and like like I do want, I mean it's not my stuff. Well, I had a copy, whatever, but I gave Loretta a copy, right, of the tapes. Now let me say, there's another, there's another. She gave me a bunch of tapes. One of the tapes is so amazing. What Henry used to do, uh, uh, he would go to the let me put them in, let me put them glasses like, like cool, like I'm this age of the cool. This is like in this is like in the late fifties. And he had this big recorder, you know, like like the Alan Lomax people, you know, like the Lomax people. And he went like fairways. He went to the through the south and re recording people. 
he recorded people in the South, right? And then there's one tape with him, uh, with him, uh, with him talking to Michael. I think it's Michael, one of his sons, and it's like he's doing a radio program. It's amazing. It's too, it's too way ahead of his time, like a freeform radio program where, where he's recording me. He's he's playing some. Music. It's it's just an extraordinary tape. And I don't know. I've got, I might see. I should be seeing Loretta next week. So maybe I'll ask her about whatever, 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 and see if that can be him. Let me have some some guess. So here's the thing. I wasn't. Well, I was pissed. I was upset. But I was kind of like, well, why? So how did this happen? So I can I see Eugene's name is on the album someplace. So I said, I took contact with Eugene. I said, Eugene, yo, um, what's happening with this, man? This is my work. And, and, and they don't even credit me to get some engineer, or whatever, Harry, some talk about somebody from Chicago. I don't know. This is my work. This is the way it is. I said, oh, yeah, well, well you know, blah, 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 we'll get it fixed, blah, 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 because I don't want to get, look, I'm not a money person, I don't get, I don't, I don't deal with money, that's my sister, she, she's got all the money genes in the family, right, she's, whatever, materialistic, I'm, 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 what's called a cancer three, three, three is number for reputation, and, and all I, I just want credit, you know what I mean, if I'm doing some work, I don't need your money, I need credit, or, you know, we do some, some something, you know what I mean, like that. I mean, right now we're going through this whole thing with the sound gathers, where people are coming, like say, like they like they own this. Um, that's that's another story for some other time. Anyway, so I really, so I, so I was, I won't say upset, but I'm going like, okay, that's the way it is, you know. I don't know what's in people's heads, but it, give the people the credit that needs the credit. Anyway, so I, I vented enough. So, so anyway. So that that's my relationship with with, with, with Henry. I started with that. Can you see all his books, everything like that? Da, 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 da. I've done a lot of stuff with around, around, around Henry and Dumas. But you know, people are people. What can I say? It's a cap. It's a it's a society that we live in. Maybe I'm the wrong person for this. Whatever. So I just had to tell you all that. I'm a Henry Dumas denizen. Uh, for this you didn't even hear before, I say Dumas because um, when Loretta and and Henry got married, when he went to the to the court, you know, to the registrar, whatever, to be married. They said, what's your name? And he said, Henry Dumas, like that. It's the first time the Redder heard that, she was impressed. Everybody puts the S on it, Dumas. I think the, he was doing the French thing. He could have been just messing with the lady, you know, he just doing the French thing, who knows? But I say Dumas. But uh, actually, Eugene knew him, so maybe it is Dumas. But I like to say Dumas, because it sounds, because I'm different than everybody else, and I've done work for that. But one more tiny story. Uh, Loretta, at one time I was working so, see, when I work with someone, I work intense. It's like I'm a water sign. I, I, I permeate, I realize, I permeate the situation. That's how I'm in relationships, but I won't get that. I permeate the situation. And I'm, it's like when um, when I was with, with, with Mahmoud, we was working on Caligula. People were working so tight, so close together, you know, and, 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 and Mahmoud had a wife and whatever, and I'd be there all the time. People thought that we were like, you know, love is, you know, whoa, this is back in the whatever. I worked so hard with, 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 with Loretta, people thought I was like, you know, I don't know, dating her or something like that. And we, she told me that one time. I said, what? She said, she go <laughs> like that. And then, anyway, so that's the, I just had to tell you, because how do you do it, especially that Root Song, I want Root Song to be, it's a, it, to me it's an ADOS song, I mean ADOS poem. It's a perfect ADOS poem. I, I, I'll put the, the link that I, I re read the poem, uh, so, and you can see what it is. So this is, and Henry is pure ADOS. Loretta is pure ADOS. Uh, Eugene, pure ADOS. All these, uh, uh, Barack Obama, pure ADOS. All these people are pure ADOS. This is before, you know, the onslaught of people coming in and doing whatever they're doing. I'm trying to whatever snipe it. So that's it. I'm sorry, it took so long. From me, T, from the Patterson's Technically Trained to Bed, letting you know what I only suspect from ADES of the A-D-O-S. That would be the American descendants of chattel slavery.